Well, greetings, Fresh Fam. Once again, Pastor Trey back at you. Now, we're continuing on from our series from last week where we, would, where we were discussing opportunity. And where that comes from is that in our day and age, what we're dealing with right now, I know a lot of people see a lot of things going on. There's a lot of sickness, a lot of tragedy, a lot of uncertainty. But when you look back throughout history, anytime there's uncertainty, anytime there's a place such as the place that we're in right now, we find that those are the time where the greatest opportunities abound. Now, I'm not making light of anything that's taking place, anything that any of you or any people that you know might be going through. But what I do believe we need to take advantage of in this season is the opportunity that's on the horizon. There is an opportunity for us. Many people, their, their beliefs, the things that they've trusted in have been shaken. Many people are looking for something to trust in, and especially for the body of Christ. It doesn't just apply in the spirit, but especially for the body of Christ. This is a time where we can use to take full advantage of the fact that people need firm foundation. And I believe that that's where this opportunity series that we're discussing comes in. Now, in order to explain this, what I used is the word right. If you recall last week, we began with the word right, R-I-P-E. And the reason we use that word is because I believe that there are three particular things that we need to do whenever opportunity presents itself in order to take full advantage of opportunity. Now, if you recall last week, if you haven't seen that video, stop the video. Go ahead, go back and take a look at that because we're going to be building on that foundation. Last week, we discussed the R in right, which was recognition. Anytime an opportunity pre presents itself, in order to take advantage, you've got to recognize it. It's impossible to take advantage of an opportunity or full advantage of an opportunity you don't recognize. Now, this week, what I want to discuss is the second area of focus in that, which is the I and the P. The I represents involvement. Involvement is important. Now, you might say, why is involvement important? Involvement is important because involvement sometimes can be viewed as passive. We know that in order to take advantage of an opportunity, we need to be involved. But somehow, I guess the way our minds work, many of us can believe that involvement, it just happens. No, involvement is not passive. Involvement is always active. When I choose to involve myself, that's an active choice. Matter of fact, that's the way God designed us. God designed us where we don't, no one can make us do anything. Think about it. Nobody can make you do anything. Now, you might say, well, my daddy can or my mom can and get that belt. They can, they, they can make some moves happen. True enough. But that's your choice. If someone puts a gun in my head and says, take off your cap, I can choose to do it. I might say, well, I value my life enough, so I'm going to take my cap off. But still, it's a choice. There's an old Chinese proverb that goes like this. It says, teachers open the door, but you must enter yourself. And I find that to be so true. When it comes to opportunity, someone can show you the opportunity or you on your own can recognize the opportunity. But if you don't enter in, if you don't involve yourself, that opportunity could go to waste. Many of us have heard that old saying that says opportunity knocks. The saying doesn't say opportunity kicks the door in. No, it says opportunity knocks because that's what opportunity does. And it gives you the choice to involve yourself. So when it comes to involvement, I believe that, like I said, it's important because we have to recognize, though I see an opportunity here, I need to do something to involve myself. Now, if you have not heard the story of Esther, Esther is a book in the Bible. And it accounts what happened with Esther when her people were about to be murdered. If you haven't read that, please, I encourage you to read it. It's a really good read. It really is. I'm not just saying it. <laughs> it's a good read. But Esther realized that her people were about to be murdered, every one of them. Her nationality, they were about to be murdered for, through nothing that they had done just because of the wickedness of one man. Well, Esther got to the point to where she realized there's an opportunity here. God has put me in the place. Esther was a queen. God had made Esther a queen. She realized God put me in this place. There's an opportunity that I have. Now, Esther was afraid because she was about to go up against a powerful man. But she got to the point to where she realized, she said, you know what? I've got to do something. I've got to involve myself. And she said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. And I'm going to go to the king, even if it kills me. And that was the point of Esther's involvement, where she realized, I need to do something. Matter of fact, the Bible says it. The Bible teaches us. When it comes to involvement, Romans 13, 1, it says, let every soul be subject to the governing authorities. Now think about that. The Bible says, let your soul be subject. What that means is that's an act of your will. Even when it comes to God, James 4, 
The Bible says, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. But that scripture starts by saying, submit yourself, even when it comes to God. God will not make us do anything. We have a choice to involve ourselves. So when it comes to opportunity, I believe that that's one important aspect of fully realizing any opportunity that's in front of us. And this opportunity is not just spiritual. It applies to everything. It applies to natural as well as the spirit. But I do believe that if we don't actively involve ourselves, if we recognize it, but choose not to involve ourselves, we can't really take full advantage of everything that God is giving us. Now, that leads me into my second point when it comes to preparation. We understand we've got to be involved, but preparation is huge. Now, you might say, what do I need to do in order to prepare for a great opportunity? I'm glad you asked that. First thing I think we need to do is to build our resources. Yeah, build your resources. Because when it gets to the execution phase, oftentimes many people will look at the product and they'll say, man, I like that. I want to be like that. They'll look at the, the, the football star, the, the, the basketball great. They'll look at the man of God who heals or the woman of God who preaches a fiery message, who can lay hands and people can be healed. They look at the financial connoisseurs who they, they seem to have everything that they want. They look at the execution phase, but they don't really look at the preparation phase. And you can see that when it comes to something as simple as look at a garden. I don't know how many of you all have ever planted a garden, but I know a few people who plant their own crops and they might bring, I might see their crops and I might look at that. and I say, man, that looks good. Or you might go to the farmer's market. And you say, man, this fruit looks good. It looks really good. And we say, man, I want this. But many times we don't look at the process that the farmer went through in order to get that fruit. And it's like that with many of our lives. We look at the execution phase. Last week, we discussed a guy named John Paulson, who, when the economy was tanking several years ago, the economy was crashing and people were losing jobs. And there was a lot of uncertainty again, like there is today. But he saw, he saw an opportunity and took advantage of it. He recognized the opportunity, involved himself, but he also prepared. He began to move money around in order to get it in a place where he could execute his plan and he could prosper from it. Young people, consider the opportunity that's in front of you. Is it in a, a professional opportunity? Does that opportunity require you to know a lot? Well, study the material now. Begin to build your resources now. Does it require you to be in good shape? Well, begin to work out now. Does it require you to have the, a certain amount of money to invest? Start saving and building the money now. Does it require you to be in alignment with God, to be able to hear, with God, hear what God is saying? Get in the prayer closet now. Preparation is key in order to take advantage of your opportunity. So when it comes to preparation, that's the first thing that we need to do. We need to begin to build our resources now. I know that many of us are locked up in our houses. We're not locked up, but many of us are under restrictions. As opposed to looking at it from that perspective to say, man, I don't want to be here. I can't wait till things get back to the same. Flip the script and say, I'm going to take advantage of this time I have right now. I'm going to begin to read right now, prepare myself so that when I come out, I'll be much better. And that's one of my prayers daily for us all, that when we come out of this thing, we are not the same. We are so much better. But in order for that to happen, we've got to put in the work of preparation. Get it done right now. But when it comes to preparation, there's also something else. There's Let's, let, let, let's hold off on that for a minute. Consider Joseph. I put this in here for a reason. Because Joseph, many of us have, have heard of Joseph, uh, Joseph, king of dreams, as we call him. Joseph, Joseph's life is a testament to preparation. If you remember, Joseph had several brothers. When Joseph was young, Joseph was all about himself. Joseph's dad gave him a coat, a tunic, and had many colors on it. And Joseph would walk around and he would flaunt that coat because his dad loved Joseph. And Joseph had dreams. Joseph got to the point where he had a dream once and he began to tell his brothers. And he said, I had a dream. And basically in his dream, y'all were bowing down to me. Joseph was all about himself. And you know the story. His brothers got tired of it, sold him into slavery. Well, over the years, Joseph learned a lot. Joseph, he, he learned a lot. God had given Joseph the ability. He gave Joseph many opportunities. And it climaxed at the point to where Joseph stood before Pharaoh. God gave Pharaoh a dream. Pharaoh didn't understand the dream. Pharaoh didn't know what was going on with the dream. But thank God for Joseph. 
Joseph recognized the opportunity. Joseph began, he, he got with God. He understood. He, he knew how to pray. He knew how to interpret based on the gift that God had given him. Well, as the story goes, Joseph was set in front of Pharaoh. Pharaoh told Joseph the dream. Joseph interpreted the dream. Joseph understood the dream. Joseph stood in front of Pharaoh and he said, Pharaoh, this is what God is saying. You're going to have plenty. There's going to come a time, seven years, you're going to have plenty for the land. You're going to live in abundance. But immediately after those seven years, there's going to be a severe famine in the land. There's going to be a hard famine. So Joseph tells Pharaoh, this is what you need to do. What you need to do is to begin to prepare. You need to find a man you can trust. And during the seven years of plenty, you need to put back a little bit, put back a little bit each year. So that when the seven years of lack come up, you'll have plenty. Joseph understood the preparation phase. Joseph had a victory at that point. And this is important because many of us get to this point where we have victory. What if Joseph decided, he said, man, I just had a victory. I stood in front of Pharaoh. Pharaoh knows my name now. And Joseph waited. What if he waited till the fifth year in order to begin to prepare? Would they have had anything during the famine? Yeah, they would have. They wouldn't have had enough. But what if he had waited till the second year? They would have had a little bit more, but not enough. And that shows how key preparation is. At the point that we recognize opportunity, that's the point that we, be, we need to begin to prepare. That's the point. We don't need to wait two months or three months or a year. Begin to prepare yourself now. Begin to read the book now. Begin to work out now. Begin to, to, to get in God's presence right now. Ask God, what do I need to do right now in order to prepare for the future? But moving on to the second thing, and the final thing that I think we need to do when it comes to preparation is to change your mind. Change your mind. Or to put it better, I would say change your mindset. Change your mindset. Don't settle for a little bit when you can have a lot. I think that many times we do get into that place where, especially when we come to God, we come to God timid and we say, God, well, here I am again. God, can, can I just have a little bit? Can I have a little bit? Listen. God wants to take care of us. When you read through the Bible, I have never seen any scripture that supports the fact that God wants us to lack. As a matter of fact, the Bible says the total opposite. God instructs us to pray for our needs. God wants to provide. He knows what we need before we even ask. God wants to bless his children abundantly. And when it comes to opportunity, God gives us opportunity. But if we go into this looking at opportunity with the mindset that, oh, I just want a little bit and God just only wants to give me a little bit, where will we end up? Consider if Joseph had that mindset. If Joseph had the mindset, well, I just want to get out of this prison. And once God got him out of the prison, Pharaoh knew his name and he didn't go any further. But Joseph understood God has given me opportunity. And even though this opportunity is bigger than what I need, God is not just looking at me. God is looking at generations. Generations were blessed because of what Joseph had in his hand, because Joseph's mind understood this is bigger than me. It's so much bigger than me. And I think that that's what we need to do. We need to get to the point to where we understand that God owns cattle, as the Bible says, on a thousand hills. What that means is that God don't lack nothing. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. God owns everything. If he wanted he got it. And if you need it, you got it. Really, get that in your mind. God owns everything. God lacks nothing. And he wants us lacking nothing. But when God pours into us, he pours into us. We, he has a vision bigger than ours. So that's why I say when it comes to preparation, I really believe we need to change our minds. Because when I go to God, consider Abraham. Abraham was extremely wealthy. God told Abraham, he said, your descendants. Now, Abraham was a man who at 70, 75 years old, Abraham had not had an heir. He didn't have a son to pass on his inheritance to. Abraham wanted a son and his wife, Sarah, they wanted a son badly. But what if Abraham had the mindset that many of us have when it comes to having children? Well, God if you could just bless me with a child, if you could just bless me with, I mean, my descendant, I just, I just want one. God told Abraham, your descendants are going to be, can you count the number of, of sand grains on the, on the seashore? No, you can't do that. That's how your descendants are going to be numbered. Can you count the, the stars in the sky? 
No, God, I can't do that. Your descendants are going to be as plenteous as the stars in the sky. What if Abraham said, well, God, I appreciate that. But I mean, I, I really don't need that. Where would we be? Where would you and I be right now? And I believe that that's why we need to change our minds. Because when it comes to opportunity, God wants us to have so much. But it's not just for you. It's not just for me. So when I change my mind, I get the understanding that, okay, I am a child of God. Now, this is not that prosperity. You can have all that you want, the Beamers and the Bentleys. It's not about that. This is about future generations for the purpose of the kingdom. This is kingdom business. This is a kingdom mindset that says that God wants me. He has given me opportunity. He's given me the opportunity right now to prosper abundantly, but not just for me and my own family, me and my own household, but for future generations down the road. Can you understand that? Oh, I certainly hope so. I really believe that this is an opportune time. So as a recap, what I really think we need to do, we need to get ourselves involved. Change your mind. Get yourself involved to understand that, okay, even though I'm right here now, I'm not always going to be here. What is it that I can do? How can I involve myself? And how can I prepare? What do I need to do now? What books do I need to read now? How much time do I need to spend in prayer right now? So at the time that God needs me to lay hands, I'll be Johnny on the spot. I'll be ready in season and out of season. What can I do right now in order to begin to build the resources, the money? How can I change my mind? God, change my mind to a kingdom mindset. Amen? Okay, well, that's all I've got for today. Now, next week, we're going to come back and we're going to finish it up. We're going to wrap up with the execution phase, which is extremely important. So if you if you have friends who you feel might be, who, or who might benefit from this message, I encourage you to share this message. Leave a few comments in the comment section. Let us know what it is that you're thinking, what you're going through. But before we go, let me pray and speak a word. Father, I thank you for your words that you have spoken. You are such a good God. You are such a good God. Father, you are the one who gives us opportunity. Opportunities are right in front of us. Now, Lord, I pray that we will take full advantage of the opportunity you've given us. Build us up for your glory, Lord. I pray for everyone who is listening to this message. According to your will, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Okay, well, I thank you for your time. I'll see you next week. Be blessed.